It's Chris. Leisure Games. Let's do this. Uh, Kickstarter roundup this week. And um, in honor of the uh, Masters of the Universe launching, uh, we're going with the Power Gray Skull Company. So uh, now this shirt actually makes sense for all the people that have never really understood it in the past. So I feel kind of vindicated a little bit in that sense. Uh, but um, let's go. Let's do this. As always, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, it'd be awesome if you'd help me get there. Uh, 5,000 by the end of the year. But... Apart from that, hopefully some interesting thoughts on some of the companies and failings we've seen on Kickstarter from I talked about earlier this week, a little bit of the news and the hotness, and a little bit of everything else. So, interesting week, a lot of stuff launching, so uh, let's go right into it, let's dive deep and see what we got. So, take two on this, uh, let's dive right into 11, now that I've actually got the screen capture up so you can see what I'm talking about instead of just some audio and a black screen. But 11, the football manager is already, you know, surpassing my expectations, 218,000 euros at this point, much higher than I would have expected, especially as a niche game. But Porto Games is doing a good job of showing off what makes it a good game, why it's getting worth it. And, you know, the rumblings on early on were that the value wasn't there. You know, this is not a cheap game for what it is either, because if you look at the rewards right here uh, with all of these expansions, it's 128 euros. That's not inexpensive. So you're getting all five expansions that are each 20 euros or about 20 euros down below for 100 euros value for less than that, for 68 euros. So honestly, if you're looking at it right now from a pure standpoint, you're going to want to get this because even if they sell for 20 euros on retail, which again, I, I'm not sure they will. I could see them going for a little bit more than that even. And that's why I would probably go for that if I was looking at it, especially, now let me put this disclaimer out there. I'm not a solo person, but having played the solo, this is going to be a great solo game in terms of what you want, especially if you're going to get all of this stuff, because it's going to add, as I said in my video of the sort of five things to know, five things to you know be aware of, whether or not it's right for you, pros, cons, that sort of things, which I, I give a lot of credit for uh, Portal Games as well, because they sent me it as a relatively nobody. And they took some of my suggestions as feedback, you know, in, in a positive, earnest sense uh, in their email response to me after they watched my video. And they still put it on the front page. And so I give them a lot of kudos for that, too, because you see a lot of the other campaigns, especially on Kickstarter nowadays, where it's either preview or it's only positive. You hardly ever see that nowadays. I'm going to cover a lot of other videos and campaigns in this roundup. And a couple of the other campaign pages that I've looked at today, they have tons of previews, they have tons of positive hype, but God forbid you put, you know, a, a real critique on there. So again, say what you want, whether or not Portal Games has games for you, they know how to run a campaign, they're responsive, they don't shirk from, you know, you know, being critiqued either. So I give them a lot of credit on that side of things as well. So... Um, but it's interesting to see if you look, you have about 50% in each of this. And I think that's just because, you know, like some of these other expansions, if you're not going to play it solo, or if you are going to play it solo, maybe you don't want all of these other expansions, the stadium expansion or the international players expansion. So if you only want like one or two of the expansions, well, you know, it's going to cost you less overall because saving money is still saving money, period. Even if it's a good deal from that side of things. Now, again, and the other rumblings that I mentioned about the not having enough value, I mean, they're upgrading things on these daily unlocks. So I, I guess that was the one other thing that I guess I would say Robinson Crusoe did a really good job of, even at the beginning, was showing a lot of the reason why you wanted the deluxifications and the upgrades right from the get-go. And so they're unlocking a lot of these as daily unlocks. And so if there's people that were sort of turned off initially, the question is, can you get those people to come back? Or are the people that are getting sort of the reminder at the 48-hour mark are going to be more impressed now that this is all there as a value standpoint and you're going to get more of a boost from that than you otherwise would have? Um, we'll see either way. Um, I think the expansions are the biggest pro because it remedies some of my concerns in terms of the staffing and the organization stuff and the stadium upgrades where some of it didn't feel as important. Like I said in the video, especially like the stadium stuff or for like the staff cards that you'll be acquiring or buying or, you know, acquiring for your team where there were one or two that I said, you know what, I would want to have this one every single time when I was doing solo, or if I was playing it competitively, I would think that that one would offer a significant competitive advantage. And so some of these expansions, especially the stadium expansion, especially the stadium expansion is adding a lot of that, which I think can help that out a lot. So all in all, I'm very positive about this campaign. All in all, I think this campaign is doing a really good job. And even though it doesn't seem like it's gangbusters, like 200,000 euros for a football game, 
that is relatively niche is economic management and not like the actual dexterity like pushing them around and focusing on the match itself which is what a lot of the other football games out there on the market do it's impressive say what you want so um it's on tabletop simulator if you want to get a little bit of that and there's a rule book out as well if you want to check that out in case the videos aren't your thing and you want to just read it it's relatively straightforward having read it myself so there you go 11 football manager on game found uh, almost two weeks to go check it out if you're interested Next up is the Little Flower Shop Dice Game, and this is Dr. Finn's uh, popular card drafting game, and this, I believe, is a relaunch, and so it, I just didn't fund the first time around, uh, like maybe last month, and it's just a dice version of the card game of the Little Flower Shop, and I believe they just had some expansions, and Dr. Finn's run a bunch of other uh, campaigns in the past, so this is from a relatively known creator. And it's just the dice version of this, where it's just you're taking these dice and you're rolling them and getting resources. And just like the dice game in a lot of these situations now from these uh, roll and writes that are incorporating themselves. So they actually link on the Pam Pam page over to the rule book, which is on, uploaded on Board Game Geek. And so you can get a little bit of a sense of how you're going to be actually playing this dice game with four different phases through six rounds. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking your dice, which are unlocked at the beginning of the round and rolling them and then allocating them simultaneously. And so then what you're doing after that is when you lock them, they're going to potentially earn you salary depending on how you roll. Then you're going to take these tile arrangements, which you're going to then place in front of you because you can't move them and arrangements become important. And then you're going to use that dice and that money to finish the arrangements and buy other tokens and ribbons and things you need to make it look a little bit better. And so that is the basic gist of the game. It's not super complicated, but you just do that six times, rinse and repeat. And so uh, how you arrange things and the better you're able to do, as well as the ribbons, which are just straight up points, determines your end game score. And there you go. Not a very complicated game from that side of things. Now, the other question always is, why are you going to get it on this you know, Kickstarter as opposed to waiting for it? They're offering this promo pack as well here. And then they have some of the, the promo packs or the expansion packs for the card game, not the dice game as well. And they're from prior campaigns. They talk about some of this. And then they talk about being able to add on some of their other games previously with an earlier release for these in terms of getting it in November rather than the date, which is July. 2022. So uh, all in all, there you go. $35 for the dice game with the promo pack uh, and the shop. Okay, so that one's the higher one. So $20 just for the other. So yeah, there you go. Um, although, did I see that right? It doesn't look like the promo pack is actually being included at the $20 level. That's kind of, I hope that's not the case, but it looks like I'm reading that correctly. One daily gold pack for the Dower flower dice games. You have to get the flower shop regular game to get the promo. Ah, that's kind of, if that's true, that's kind of, yeah. Anyway, it's 7,500 out of 12,000, so check it out if you're interested. Next up is Magic Sword Tactics. Uh, I backed this. I had this saved, and this is a solo uh, Japanese game uh, that was in the 2021 uh, Japanese game market. They usually do, I think, two or three game markets a year, and it used to be pretty big before COVID sort of hit and sort of knocked it down a notch, but they're starting to get made back but they're starting to get back into it. And this is a game that, you know, was one of those where they make a certain number of copies. And if you don't get it at the game market, you may just never get it. But now it's on crowdfunding and it's got $600 of the 1800. And I'm one of those 25 backers, as you can see. Um, it's just a solo tower defense uh, magic attacking game. You know, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, like it says here, the demon lord marches towards the city. You roll and use your cards and dice to attack. If you get down to zero hearts or they reaches the town, you lose. So... It's nothing complicated. I'm hoping to get a little bit more information. I haven't looked at the rule book here yet on the link to Twitter, but they give you sort of the different levels that you can be using in terms of weapons. Uh, hopefully some stretch goals there, although that would be creating an English version of the card. That would be really kind of nice, uh, but I'm not sure if that's going to hit that. So this one might not end up funding. This one may not end up, um, you know, being English. So I may be in a little bit of trouble there, uh, but I have one of these super early bird discounts for $16 too. So we'll see. Uh, I don't know. I did it. Let's see where it goes. I, you, you know me, if you've watched my channel, I like backing stuff like this. This is my weak spot. This is my kryptonite. Uh, but anyway, it's magic sword tactics. Check it out. Help it get made to an English version, but, or not too. That's okay. Next up, we have insurmountable, which has an insurmountable amount of money raised for the first day for a game that I only learned about two days prior to launch that it was going to be launching. 
and this is a solo game being produced and put out by button shy games but it's by scott alms who you've probably heard of at this point and it's just like i said from button shy games it's ten dollars and it's 17 cards and 1800 people from the solo side of things are backing it so they must be pretty happy with what it actually entails and you're climbing the mountain where it's you know never been climbed before and that is what you're doing, an ever-changing mountain. And it's a next piece of the path that you have to lay down to complete the route while simultaneously meeting whatever goals come along your way. The gist of this game, as you can see right here, this gives you everything you need to know. You have 17 cards. You place five cards face up in the bottom of the edge area. Then that serves as your hand. Leftmost card can be placed on the mountain. New cards are added on the right side. And then you choose to play your leftmost card in the row in the mountain. You're forming a 10-card pyramid when it's done. You either play them to the base or on a higher spot when there's two cards underneath that can support it. If you complete the pyramid and have an unbroken route, you win. Boom, that's it. There's an example of what it's going to look like, that 4 three, two, one sort of style of pyramid. But if you want to manipulate cards and do that, you can discard any other card from the row to gain its effect, and that can be swapping or moving those cards uh, or even putting them directly on the mountain. So, again, difficulty levels there. Uh, free stretch goals. Well, free expansion, really. So honestly, I mean, it, if you're a solo person, I don't see why you wouldn't get this if this appeals to you whatsoever. I mean, this looks solid uh, for 10 bucks, 11 bucks gets you both expansions. I mean, yeah, I'd get $11 and I'd be in on that one if I was a solo person. So I can see why it's got that much money raised. If you're interested, check it out, Unsurmountable. Next up, we have Alternor Secrets. This is just over about a quarter of the way funded. Uh, sort of this moving tower with uh, several different rings, each with eight sections where you are going and trying to manipulate the rings and alternating character uh, abilities and plays and actions between uh, individual players and trying to score the most points in order to win. Because how the game played wasn't very clear from what little information we had prior to the campaign. Uh, original game, character activation, interaction. Uh, now, yep, here we go. So 1v1 or three and four players. That was my concern in the upcoming roundup video was, you know, I couldn't see how you could do this game. And when you say you're alternating between characters, uh, how you, you do it at a three or four player, unless it's sort of, you know, maybe a free for all, but more I look at it as a team 2v2. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, Kickstarter exclusive golem here, uh, the arena. Now this is 1v1, like I was just mentioning. Uh, rotating rings, the tactical abilities everything that you're going to be getting along with that. And I guess the other concept is, or the concern is that, did this really need miniatures? Would this be fine with standees or something else like that? And is it causing a little bit too much of price point bloat from that side of things? I mean, and I don't say that as a bad thing, like, but I say that as it's not funded. And if it's not funding with miniatures, would you have been better off of having a reduced price and having less miniatures and getting more people in at a lower level? So uh, new abilities, new guilds here with an add-on. Again, though, I, I will say this on every single one. I don't know how the game plays before you show me an add-on. So you've got two add-ons here before I know how the game is, what the mechanics are like. I, I need to see more. Like, this looks great. I, it's adding more stuff, uh, adding it to three or four players, having a whole lot of twists and guarantees and new stuff, and that looks great. I love asymmetry. I love that style of things. But again, I don't know how the game plays. We get some quotes here, some links. Okay, so I mean, but we get halfway down the page before you even see anything like this. And this is going to be one of my other big critiques from one of the pages later in this video of uh, Verdant, uh, that there is literally about half the page just of quotes and videos. Like, I don't need that much. Here it talks about the ring rotations to move your enemies, steal from them or fight from them, get close to where you want to and further away from where maybe you don't want to be. And that's a, how you can win geometrically activate you know which characters you're going to activate and the actions each turn that you're going to be choosing from uh how you're going to be interacting and dealing with what they do um bluffing surprising again but i mean it doesn't tell me how you're doing that stuff okay let's take a look here the arena and then the three or four player game no i was going to give you a little bit of synopsis of the rules uh up here but it's 47 pages so i'm not going to, be able to do it in this video but i highly suggest you watch one of these how to play videos or if you want to check out the rules linked to their website on the power of gamers, you can check it out. But like I said, I mean, it's literally 47 pages here in terms of going through the different halls that you're going to be adding or guilds or the abilities that they all have and the phases in terms of how you're going to be interacting and what you need to know about all those phases. So, I mean, there's a lot of information here. Now it's good, but like, I mean, maybe it's not as long as I expected because some of this is, I mean, this are just pictures of the miniatures, pictures of the guild, not telling me anything I really need to know. So win conditions right there. So, I mean, it goes through everything, 
but it's also a lot of information to digest. So you might be better off with a video if you're not a big rules person like I am at this point. Um, I mean, let's see what the price point is. It's about $100. And that's going to get you just the arena, though. So that's interesting. And the guild master for 153 is going to get you the two expansions. So this uh, brings up the point, though, when you're doing this, is it a little bit too much bloodstone uh, from uh, earlier uh, in the year? where Bloodstone tried to do too much. It tried to do the PvE and the PvP, and is this trying to do the 1v1 as well as the skirmish and you know the team mode? And I guess that would be my question, is how much of it is too much and what's going to look like from that side of things? Is one game mode going to be more fleshed out or just that much better? So that would be my concern. But there you go. Stretch goals, revelations, a little bit of everything from that side of things. I mean, we'll see. I don't know. I, I could see this funding slowly, or I could see them canceling in four or five days a week uh, when they, you know, just have reached the backer one day or two day surge. So either way, it's interesting. I'm going to check out the video this weekend. Uh, I suggest you check it out if you have any interest as well. Alt nor secrets. Next up, we have Onball Tournament. Uh, this is a relaunch. And honestly, I think it's doing a lot better than its previous launches. It's already about almost 85% of the way funded here, 5,000 to the 6,300 goal. And it's basically the two-player, now they say up to four-player, mage dueling type game with uh, 100 unique cards. So you have four factions, each with 25 different cards, and they are different. There's no duplicates. There's no repeats. And so what you're going to be doing is just you know playing cards that are unique to your faction that aren't going to be replicated anywhere. And so... I mean, play is relatively straightforward. Play, reveal, you know, draw one, play one. And that's, I mean, you know, again, how much do you want to go with that? How easy is it going to be hit the table? Those are the concerns when you have a game like this. How much does it set itself apart? And definitely the 100 unique cards is a way to set it apart from that side of things. Now you can check out the rule book if you want. And you get to see a little bit of how the simultaneous uh, phases and drawing and how the battle phases go. I mean, you're playing these cards face down and revealing them one by one. And you play cards and you can stop using skills and it goes across the board depending on how much you have there. And then you have these skills and then just rinse and repeat. So it's it's very interesting. I, I like the idea of it, but I'm not a big two-player dueling game. I'm just not. And I think, like, as I said last week, I mean, the biggest concern is that, you know, how many of these can you have? Now, the nice thing is that it doesn't appear to need deck construction. You can have more of just a preset thing. But that would be the other concern is that if you're given 25 and, you know, you only want 20, well, how many times am I going to be willing to do that of choosing the five? And more importantly, I'm willing to do it, but how much is my wife willing to do as my primary gaming partner? That's what I'm more concerned about is, is she willing to take a look at this and take the nuance and the depth that's required to make sure it's a balanced game? Or is she just going to randomly pull five cards and we're just going to play so it depends on what you want from that side of things. I mean, $33 is $33. I think it's fine from a price point standpoint. Um, they got some funding goals there as well as probably some other stretch goals. Again, the art is beautiful. I just need to see you know, what it looks like. This is one where I would be happy to get a review copy of, but I'm not sure I would feel comfortable enough yet with my own personal style and my own knowledge of what I hit the table with uh, to know whether or not this is right for me by backing it right now. Because like I said, I'm not a typical, like a lot of two player mage dueling esque games. I have a few, I don't know how many more I need. And that's, it's a tougher market to sort of get a niche in, but they're trying and they're trying again. I give them a lot of credit and, uh, hopefully this time they'll fund. So that is on ball tournament foundation. Check it out if you're interested. Next up is the Red Bernus Algeria 1857, and this is a deck building game where you are just basically trying to uh, survive the French invading armies. That's just the goal, and it's already over 50% of the way funded, so let's check out what they've got here. Um, you're working in these villages using deck building, area control, and dice rolling. It's a cooperative war game, which you don't see, I guess I don't see a lot of. I don't think of war games as cooperative when I'm looking at them from the little that I know about war games. So, um, and especially with the deck building mechanic that's really interesting to me and i think that's why it has a little bit more eyes on it than i would normally expect with this um yeah you just can't let them capture villages you've got your starter deck here village cards a little bit of everything and you've got the different actions that you have being able to utilize in terms of the village and the villagers and how you're going to be acting in response to what the french autonoma deck automa deck is doing in the first sense playing the cards discarding it you know trying to figure out the timing of that it's, it's again, it's just something completely different. As a non-war gamer, this actually has somewhat of a decent appeal with those sorts of mechanics. Now, I don't think the aesthetic is very pretty. I'm not a big fan of the art whatsoever. And shipping $17 for, ooh, $65 game. Okay, $65 game, great. 
but that's more expensive than I would have guessed. So, hmm, it is what it is. It's definitely different. It's definitely unique. Again, the question on something like this too is why get it now? Rules are out there. Hmm, interesting, different, unique. Check it out if you're interested. Next up, we have Reputation. Uh, this corporation-themed bidding game that I talked about last week where uh, the new thing is you have these trillion-dollar companies that are trying to slowly take over. It's over 50% funded. It's a three- to five-player bidding and auctioning game, which, again, is sort of a very interesting dynamic. And I didn't see this last week, but this is by the designer of Scout. If you've heard of Scout, it's sort of this card game where you're trying to lay in uh, patterns. Uh, Japanese game, which uh, has a lot of people that really like it. I actually imported it as well myself, but I didn't like it, to be frank with you. It's one of the one of the Japanese games that I felt went flat with us with the group that I played with. But I know it's a solid pedigree from that side of things, so I understand where they're coming from with that. But three to five players is a very interesting uh, core group because three is often a very difficult number for people consistently. But um, the bidding and the auctioning is definitely something we don't see a ton of as well on this side of things. So what are you actually doing? Okay, here they're talking about what you're getting. How do you actually play? So you have 10 rounds, public, private sector projects that you're bidding on. You have set amount of credits to do so. and But then there's, interestingly enough, there's three different ways that you can bid. Private sector, investing your workers, or investing workers in a private bid between two players. So you're co-sponsoring in that sense. So earn the most credits while maintaining a high reputation. And this is important because, as I said last week, with the lowest reputation, it doesn't matter how many victory points you have. If you're the lowest reputation, you're out. And so then it's after that, it's the person who has the most victory points. So that is, or profit, if you will. But the rulebook is on there. Um, it's just a very interesting style of games. So definitely not for me, again, but for $22 and by the guy with Scout, um, that seems pretty a solid pedigree. So I won't be surprised if this funds. Uh, and now again, you have to like the, the bidding and auctioning style of things because I think that's the different mechanic here. But if you do, I think it's worth a shot. I think it's worth something that you might not be able to get a whole lot at retail. And if you have that player count, then definitely check it out. So that's reputation. Next up, we have Dog Park, which is also over 300% funded, which is in pretty impressive for this. And I sort of said this in the roundup in terms of the upcoming videos last week. Like, this is one that I could see easily, like, failing to fund or easily doing, like, 100,000 plus. And they're right on the way of, you know, being the 100,000 plus at this point. So what do you need to know about this uh, sort of set collection, uh, one to four player uh, type game with walking dogs? Again, I said this last week, I'm not a dog person, I'm a cat person. So the aesthetic and the appeal thematically does absolutely freaking lootly nothing to me at this point. Uh, you're walking dogs, growing your reputation and trying to uh, get more uh, unique treats uh, for the dogs to earn uh, more happy points and happy points are victory points. So what do you need to know? 39 pounds, oh, that's, that's more expensive than I was thinking. 47 plus shipping for a deluxe version. And collector's edition with playing cards is 54. If you're going to talk about aesthetic, two games I'm not really a big fan of that are raising a lot of money this week is this and uh, Verdant. And I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, uh, art is subjective and there's plenty of games I've heard people say that I have that they don't like too. So that's okay. Now, again, what are you actually doing in this? And this is just, I'm looking at this page and this is just a massive page. Now you have these collector's edition, which come these two expansions, uh, screen printed meeples, uh, slip cover as the exclusive. Mm. Again, add-on, expansion, expansion, cards, how to play. So here we go. So you're going to be trying to recruit based on a little bit of a bidding system there, selecting which dogs you want to walk around by placing them on the leash, uh, journey them through the park, and collecting reputation and resources as you go. And, you know, you're trying to get back home uh, based on, you know, how quickly you do it, how many dogs you walk, how it affects your reputation. So rinse and repeat. After four rounds, whoever has the most reputation, you're the most accomplished dog walker. Uh, rule book is right here, which again is good. Uh, plenty of video, tabletopia, a little bit of everything, a whole bunch of quotes. Again, this is like the whole middle of the page right here. And so we got some objectives in terms of stretch goals. Again, most of this is non-gameplay, except for the bonus objectives there. So why back now? Talks to a little bit about the cards. Again, I wish this stuff was at the top. This stuff is the stuff that should be at the top. Not this stuff, but the other stuff that I was talking about. So all in all, I mean, it's... It's definitely a different theme. It's definitely a different aesthetic. We're seeing a lot more of this dog, cat, nature, ilk. And I, I'm not personally attracted by it, but I mean, clearly by the funding level and the mechanics, people are. So if you are one of those people, Dog Park, check it out.
Verdant now is up next, and that's again eighty thousand dollars already raised. And I'm going to be surprised if this doesn't hit closer to two by the end of it. Um, you know, it's the same price point as Cascadia and Calico, uh, their previous two hits. It's doing just enough different, but just enough the same. If you're familiar with uh, either of the other two, especially, it looks like more similarly uh, Cascadia to me with a different nuance. And so I'm not backing this yet at this point, but I probably will be because this is going to be probably an easy thing to get to the table since my wife really liked Cascadia as well. And again, it's relatively straightforward. You have the cards, you have the rooms, you alternating between house cards and room cards, but on the sides of these room cards, you'll see that there's lighting that you want to have uh, touching the correct house plant based on their lighting. And so you're trying to match those up. Uh, and that's basically the gist of it. And then it's got these little other tokens that are sort of like the little pine cone uh, ones in Cascadia in terms of bonus points and clever uses. Uh, 124 unique cards. Again, uh, that's the other benefit is uh, there, there's a lot of just uniqueness and you may not ever get the same thing again, no matter how many times you play. And that's interesting. Uh, 50 unique plant types, 10 of each five types. So again, great. The unique room cards, the unique goal cards, enough to give some variability there without going too in depth in the complexity. Uh, some deluxe wooden components, which again is fine. Don't care. Uh, and you're getting the promo pack, which is the other reason that you got Cascadia. It's going to be $29 plus the $11 shipping in the U.S. So I don't think you're going to beat that when you include the promo pack. And that's it. Like I said, you're drafting a card and a token, adding it to your room and your plant, uh, alternating between the two, making sure the lighting condition matches up. If you get you know, a match, you get extra points. And then you have furniture as well as pets in order to nurture them and help them grow better. And that's all you need to know. And there's a bunch of videos here. This is the scrolling of the videos here and the quotes. Still going, 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 stretch goals finally. But that's, I mean, if you watched my little scroll bar on the right side of the camera, I'm not sure if you can see that in what I have cut off or cut on. That's a ton. It's a ton. That's almost too much. It makes the these pages on Kickstarter are getting longer and longer and longer. And unlike GameFound where you can skip to sections, I'm just scrolling here until I find it. Now, again, the upgrades, I mean, this is all just upgraded stuff. So, I mean, uh, this is just stuff that I assume or hope is going to be there. Now, I'd love to see this. So, it's going to hit some of that stuff. Which, again, this is going to be, if you haven't reminded, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be just whether or not it's for you. And how, which of these, or how nuanced you like this sort of thing. Again, shipping's an $11. So, for me, it's going to be $40 total, which is more than palatable from that side of things. So, that's why I said last week, it's going to be a hard one for me to pass at this point. Even though I'm not backing now. I mean, I have 43, 43 freaking days. Um... I haven't seen a campaign this mainstream that long in a long time. But anyway, you have 43 days, right? It's not even going to be on next month's credit card bill. It's going to be like on December's at this rate. So anyway, Burden, flat out games, uh, looks solid, looks very solid. Check it out. Now, next up, we have Sushi Boat. This is from Japanime. I talked about this in my upcoming video last week. Like they held this almost too close to the vest. Like why didn't you announce this sooner so you can get more people hyped? And I mean, I wonder, again, if you didn't know about it, you're only at 50% of your funding goal just under in the first day, which again, you're going up against some heavy competition today. So I understand, but at the same time, you know, a little hype doesn't hurt either. Uh, $60 too. That's been the other problem with a couple of the other Japan made games I've, I've backed like Testament and like Tokyo sidekick. Like there hasn't always been the biggest incentive to back now. And the price point has always been a little bit on the higher side of what I would expect. Now, obviously import or some of that, but like, so a lot of these are already developed too. So uh, there isn't as much development in all these that needs to take place as some of the other ones. So it's just an interesting dynamic in terms of that. So, I mean, what are you actually doing here? I mean, this is a sushi based game that you are, you know, going around and dealing with uh, as these plates sort of rotate. And they say, you know, look, we, wooden board, ceramic wasabi bowl. And so that, I guess, is right there, the price point issue. And not a lot of their other games have been that high from a production standpoint. So uh, at least, you know, he's a little bit more of where it's coming from there which is, again, a very interesting side of things. Uh, but again, how are you actually playing? Now, Wooden Board is really cool, and you know it's not going to be available at the standard release. So that's, I mean, that's a little FOMO, but it's kind of cool at the same time. And what are you going to be actually doing? On your turn, you take the following three steps. Reveal the top side dish card, move your pawn to an empty seat, and perform up to two actions. So you're eating sushi, taking the plate off of one of these areas in front of your character right there that you can see. Then... Without looking at the hidden plates, add it to your stack. And you have to remember what you've eaten, visit the staff, tip them if you want to use a speckle, special action, 
or take one yen from the bank. I mean, if you can't buy it, you know, or buy the one you want, you know, you need to go a little bit of a loan. So that's it. You can't repeat the same action twice, but once all three faces are done, player to the left goes, it runs through a little bit of the other things. Once you run out of side dishes, uh, wrap up, pay the bill, and person who has uh, essentially set collected the best in terms of variety, number of side dishes, and wasabi cubes that you're gonna be getting has one. Rule books are right here. Again, uh, some quality stuff. I mean, it looks like a decent game. I just don't know. And so I'm going to have to watch this one because, uh, again, my biggest concern with some of the Japan anime ones, some of the errata like Testament had, or just some of the balancing and some of the other uh, side of things. And I don't want to get lured in by the sight of a wooden board uh, because, yeah, I mean, it's expensive. It's going to be more expensive. But is that okay or is that not okay for me? I think the gameplay is ultimately going to decide that. And that's where the rule book right here as well as maybe one of these videos might be the most helpful thing. So if you're interested, check it out though, but it's, it's a little bit more on the expensive side, but not completely unanticipated based on what I know about the previous Japan anime games having back several of them. So there you go, Sushi Boat. Check it out if you're interested. Next up, we have Scandal O. Now you may recognize this a little bit. This is from the same people who did Awkward Guests, which a lot of people like from a deduction management side of things. And they play heavily on that in the campaign page here. They even have Tom Vassell's quote right here, my favorite deduction game ever. But basically this is like TMZ paparazzi version of deduction game where you're trying to uncover a scoop or an embroiled and fair of uh, one of five celebrities and you're trying to match it up in terms of the clues and the who did what's it sort of things. And like it says, okay, celebrity, brilliant deck system. I always find it weird when people give them compliments or name it weird like that. That's just always my sort of thing. 16 possible stories for each scandal, which one is right. Each one requires three resources and you get access to the contacts, which help you get the resources that you need. And you have to investigate by finding a newspaper that's also willing to write your story in the first place. Uh, the deck system that they talk about here, creating the different decks of cards and the initiation and the different numbers that you're gonna be interacting with. And I mean, it's language independent. So it's, it's a very much a twist on awkward guests if you're not familiar with it from that side of things. Uh, there's enough videos here as well, if you want. All of these are actually links to videos. Uh, and so if you want anything in different languages, it's all there. So tabletop simulator, uh, what it's getting in the box, reviews, again, a little bit of everything. Again, a large portion of the page on videos. Imagine if these weren't minimized. These are all individual videos too. This again, would be taking up a massive amount. And it's 32 euros, which is not bad. And I think the Awkward Guest campaign, if you got the expansion, sells for more than what it did during the campaign. So if this is anything as good as Awkward Guests, people are going to be interested. And this $50 pledge is probably the one you're going to go with, especially since it's got the exclusive breaking news expansion with it as well. So it becomes sort of a no-brainer on what you want to do from that side of things. So again, other pledges, delivery schedule, 12-month time frame. They go through actually, which is really nice here. And I wish this was at the top. Like this is something you should have right up at the top. What makes this different from awkward guests? I mean, that'd be nice to know. I also think it's weird to have a video that is on the day of launch on sh called Should You Back? It just, it just seems weird to me to have it because I think a lot of things are just undecided yet prior to the campaign actually hitting ground and seeing what comes out with it. So especially like with my 11, like I talked about, like my 11 was a prototype copy one scenario and not sure some of the variability or how much re reception was going to be on some of my concerns. And so for me to sell people whether or not to back it at that point was just way too early, especially now that they 11 has revealed a lot of the stretch goals or the daily unlocks, if you will, with significant upgrades that are worthwhile. And so just anyway, as a side note, but anyway, that is Scandal O. If you're interested in that, if you liked Awkward Guests, if you heard about Awkward Guests, I suggest you check this one out uh, because it's coming from a relatively good pedigree. It's already 200% funded. Um, Scandal O, check it out. Okay, now here we go. T-shirt time. Masters of the Universe, the board game, Clash for Eternia. I mean, this is the USA version of Masters of Eternia. We saw what Archon Studios did. We saw what their EU exclusive one did. And now we're going to see what Simon has done. And, you know, at the time of filming this, you know, we're only about eight hours in. So 633,000, 200,000 goal. What is that going to mean? It's a 16-day campaign, which is a little bit longer than I was expecting. And the only videos on here are the Quackalope ones. And I know Board Game Co. put out his video too today as well. But the question is, you know, what do you need to know about this one? How is it different from a lot of the other stuff out there? It's a 1v all where the one can be either side, the good guys or the bad guys, which is something unique. We usually have only seen uh, in traditional 1v all games in the past where the one was always the bad guy. Uh, it's using sort of the Rise of Moloch system in a little bit of sense. More actions that the 
all team takes gives more actions and more power than conversely to the one team. And so it helps create a different balance in terms of the dynamics there. And you can have different scenarios and how you want to do this. But frankly speaking, the IP does nothing for me. And that's my biggest concern is that am I just going to be suckered in by the IP? Because some of these miniatures, especially with the expansions down here in the minions, don't really terribly impress me. Uh, there is a little 3D as well. We'll see that right here. The rule book is out here as a work in progress. I'll check that out on my how should you back. Go into more some more detail on that side of things. Uh, this is the Defender uh, Pledge because you're getting the expansion and the Plastic Castle and all of the stuff that comes with it. Now, the Assault on Castle Grayskull expansion, I mean, it's coming with uh, like this Grayskull Castle. I mean, I don't know. It just, you'll see, you'll see it here in a second. So the minions right here and the components and then the 3D terrain right here. Like, I look at this as, like, this it reminds me of, like, when I was a kid when this actually came out. Like, this is what it looks like. I mean, it doesn't look like anything like Dwarven Forge or anything like that. It just reminds me of, like, the cheap 80s plastic toys, which... Are you going for nostalgia, or are you going for... It actually just looks like that, and it reminds me of sort of what Fireball Island did with their remake, where I was horribly unimpressed by it. Like, Ladder, Hilltop, Training Dummy, Banner, like, that's what you're selling right there? I don't... I don't... I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't impress me in terms of that. Uh, I guess maybe I'm one of the only few. I didn't really look at what the pledge levels were doing in terms of each one here. So 339, 2600. So yeah, almost everyone's getting the higher one. But again, it's probably more from a resale side of things. If you're going to get the higher one, it's going to have some more resale if it comes with that. But I don't know. That's that's interesting from that side of things. Again, colors. Okay, here are the Quackle videos I talked about. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about the Dice Tower one too. My bad. Uh, they did a playthrough, so you can actually see a little bit of what it looks like, and they're doing uh, and they're doing daily reveals. So we'll see a little bit more of what that's going to be, along with stretch goals. That is sort of Simon's new mo today. Uh, nowadays, with their latest couple campaigns of doing both, I mean, I have no association with any of these, so none of these mean a whole lot to me. And I don't know if people are expecting this, not expecting this, if this is good, if this is bad. I don't know. It's typical uh, Simon right now in terms of that, and the optional buys right now we are at two. So I'm imagining there will be a bunch more. This is sort of where I wish you could do the game found thing and follow without backing. But I'll be checking in on this one frequently throughout the campaign. And sort of when it comes a little bit closer to the end, maybe in about a week and a half, 10, 12 days, I'll have a campaign video out on should you back or not. Based on what I see, what I know, and what we need to know in terms of making the best decision for you. So uh, Master of the Universe, skirmish style board game. Check it out. So next up, we have One Deck Galaxy. Now, this is by the people who brought you One Deck Dungeon. So if you're familiar with that game, and a lot of people are, and a lot of people really like it as this solo game, this is the next iteration of this. Now, this is a little bit different because this is using more dice with your cards, but they're using some of the same uh, mechanical setup, and they're going with the very same uh, price point and uh, deluxification. The deluxification being these plastic thicker cards, which were, I think, relatively hard to get outside of the actual Kickstarter campaign previously. And they're already 150% funded, so you can kind of see what you're getting, $76,000. And it gives you a little bit of an overview of what you're actually doing in this game. What you're trying to do is you're trying to grow your galaxy, grow your federation of stars. Now, this is a one to two player cooperative game, but if you want to say uh, play four people, they say you can combine two sets. Uh, Long-term strategic planning is definitely a nuance of this game that they say is a strength. Now, what are you actually getting in the game? You're using a combination at the beginning of every game of one of these homeworld cards, one of these society cards, and going up against and one of the adversary cards. And now this is the main core of the game. And so some of the stretch goals are already addressing that to add more of each of these to give more variability. But okay, now we've talked about what's in there, but how are you actually playing? Here's the price points, 25, 45 for those levels that I mentioned. Okay, but what do you actually need to know? Well, you have this dice pool based on your home world and it gives you each of the dies based on the color. Okay, great, easy, whatever. You get location cards, you get encounter cards. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be feeling those dice right here, you can see, on here based on the color and based on the number that you need. And the higher dice are gonna be better for these uh, locations and encounters to be able to complete them. But then you go, okay, well, Chris, what are the lower dice for? Well, the lower dice are for actually building ships. 
And so this is the area that you have for your star base that allows you to do a research either for science or for building more ships to help you explore. And when you get those location encounter cards that I just mentioned, you can see over here on the left side of things where they are adding, you slot them under and they give you an extra die or an extra power or whatever it may be. And so that's how the benefit of doing that sort of takes effect. That's the nutshell of the game. I mean, obviously, the adversaries are doing a little bit of everything different in terms of their actions during their parts of the round and their phases. But again, you can see an overview of what things actually look like. Um, they've got some videos up here. Uh, you know, you're hitting your milestones in terms of upgrading your federation, how you're going to also be confronting other things in the game. And, you know, a little bit of everything else right here. They go through a little bit of the home worlds and what the differences are. Here are the stretch goals that I mentioned. Uh, adding some hyper violet cards, um, normal ink cards. There you go, game container. But now the stretch goals here, fifth home world, fifth society. You know, they're adding a bunch of stuff from the fifth side of things. So six bucks shipping. Uh, I mean, all in all, it's a good price, I guess. Uh, the question is whether or not you need uh, the deluxe or not. That'd be the big question. I think the deluxe is harder to get, like I said, post retail campaign. But is it for you? Definitely, if you're a solo person, I think I've heard relatively very positive things about this side of things. And if this is another iteration along those lines in that same thinking, probably worth checking out. One Deck Galaxy, Asmati Games. There you go. Next up, we have Elementa Arcanum. This is just under 10% funded. I covered it in the upcoming games last week. It is a one to six, it says, chaotic 15 minute uh, solo versus team mode uh, type of game. And it's a card game, essentially. Now they say it's a deck building game. And this is this is my one concern when I read this. Okay, it's it's accessible. It's a tiny footprint. It's quick to play. But then there's three levels of complexity. Teach as you go. Um, you know, not needing you know heavy RPG mechanics. My concern is that that is it just trying to do too much, too much in a too small of a package. And and that, that, that's weird to say. But I I hope that it's focused in the development of like one or two of these modes because I think at the bottom there are also two different modes that you can play in and just like. Like, do one thing really, really well. That's what you want to do in these situations. Now, obviously, you're starting with these spells, and you have the twos, the threes, and the fours, and you have a certain number of those, and then you also have upgrading your decks into the adepts, into the five, sixes, and sevens here, and then upgrading into the eights, tens, and twelves until you get, like, the ultima spells up here. So they do this uh, different health system as well you're tracking your health not really with health the attacker gets so many stars the defender loses a star so it doesn't behoove you to attack somebody with no stars you can't have less than zero so it just tries to hold off on the crowd on the leader sort of thing or crowd on one person sort of king making uh fight cards buy cards um there you go uh, they talk about the ultima spell that i mentioned and they give a little bit of an overview there now there's no video and that's a little bit um concerning i'd like to see how this one plays they do have a rule book up here i believe let's see if i can find it cha 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 rule book rule book rule book rule book rule book rule book okay no i guess i don't see a rule book and that's maybe my main concern then so here's the rule book um here's a couple of how to play videos and so uh this is what you want to look at if you want to get a better sense of things it just needs a little bit more on the page, I'd say. And this isn't a complicated rule book, but it's still like 12 pages. So again, solo at the end there, advanced game, advanced game, advanced game, full game. So, I mean, are all of these different difficulties and different modes worth it? That's the main question I look at when I see this, especially as a game that doesn't have a whole lot of info coming in or a whole lot of hype. So uh, check it out if you're interested, but that's Elementa Arcanum. Now, last up, we have Flee the Dungeon a three-on-one tile placement dunder crawling game. So this is a three-on-one. So the question is, do you actually need three? Probably not. You can probably do it one-on-one, -on -one, but this is sort of a, a strange uh, iteration of roll and move, essentially, with these light tiles where you're going to be flipping over the tiles and seeing what's in there and how it's going to affect your adventurers. And it says, I mean, like I said, one versus all element of things. And so that's just what you need to know. It's, you know, it's not even 10% funded yet but it's got $1,000 raised already. Uh, you're basically these heroes that have been captured in a dungeon trying to make your way out and escape. The rule book is up here. I mean, again, it's only a 16 page rule book. You can get a little better sense of what you're doing in terms of these torchlight spaces equaling one step. But if you enter different dungeon, dungeon tiles, then you can see other things that happen. The monster tiles, the trap tiles, the portal tiles, uh, spending rations, tri treasure tokens, cursed treasures, uh, you know, everything under the sun for that. But 
I don't know. It just seems very, very simplistic from a mechanism standpoint. And if that's something more of your what you're looking for, this might be that. But also, um, I don't know. It just feels like it's missing something. And I don't really quite know what that is. But you go through, okay, what all these tiles are. And I guess how much mitigation can you have? Or how many abilities do you have? I mean, it's all very straightforward. So take that for what you will. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it needs just a little bit more from a depth side of things. And I guess it, the, the player count would be my concern is that it, do you need to play one versus three? Like, so if you are the three, can you be just one? Like, can you be one person controlling three different characters? Is that going to be too much? Is it going to be too little? Is it going to be balanced? I mean, one versus all games need to be very, very delicately balanced. So it's, it's an interesting uh, project here, especially as a tile laying, tile flipping game, if you will. Uh, $30 price point for the project and stretch goals. So if you're interested, that's Flee the Dungeon. Check it out. So there we go. That's it. That's the roundup this week. Hopefully you caught your eye with a few interesting things. I think actually um, either on Sunday or Monday, I'm going to try and put out a video talking about all the new news of Gen Con. Just the announcements that you may have seen, that you may have missed, a little bit of commentary on it instead of just your normal like news or hotness post. And so I'll try and do something like that. I've got a review coming up of a couple games. It's just kind of like which one I get to and which one I can get posted. I've got a bunch of stuff coming in that I need to get played so I can review it, including Mythic Mystif. Uh, that one I need one or two more plays in before I can really sort of get my full thoughts on it because it is a little bit different and because there are several different factions that I'm trying to get a sense of. And then a little bit of everything else. I'm not really sure uh, what else is going to be coming out. I have... A comparison video that I think I'm going to do talking about if you're a fan of Marvel, you know, I thought I'd just maybe tie it right in. I am binging. I am almost done with all three of the Marvel series. And so I'll have my rank video out for that with spoilers. And then I am going to tie in maybe another video like right the next day before or after of, okay, Marvel Champions, Marvel United, Marvel Legendary. Which one is right for you? What do you need to know? Pros and cons of all of those. You know, just because I, you hear those questions all the time. I see those questions all the time on Reddit and forums. And is this one right for me? Is this what I'm looking for? How does it compare? What do I need to know? Where are things at? Is it worth getting into? That sort of things. So I'll probably put that out as well as soon as I get to filming that, you know, because, you know, we can do so much of this before, you know, you kind of got to take a break. But uh, yeah, obviously not going to Gen Con. I'm working all weekend again. Yep. That's pretty much how my life goes right now. So uh, hopefully your weekend is a little bit better than mine. Uh, but, you know, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're backing. Let me know what you're uh, looking forward to. It's going to be very interesting next month or so. Very interesting. So thanks for tuning in. Stay classy. Have a great day. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. I'll see you around.